social media check-in. What do we got? So Prince Dandy, a uh, VIP member, asks, how long does it take to get a re-entry waiver for someone who overstayed? She's married to a U.S. citizen but has no kids. Uh, at least a year right now, unfortunately. Peter W. James Jr., also a Brad Squad VIP member, asks, my wife is a permanent resident and I am on an F-1 visa, which is scheduled to expire February of 2022. Ha we have filed the I-130 and I-130A. If the I-130 gets approved before my visa expiration date, can I continue to live in the U.S. while my forms are processed? You should be filing an I-45 right now because uh, once your student status is up, you have to leave the United States of America. What I would do is you have an I-130 pending, you're married to a resident, visa are available, file an I-485 at this very moment. Angelique V. Whitaker, uh, a Brad Squad VIP member, wants to know what documents do I need to file an eight-year-old stepchild abroad? Uh, an I-130 visa petition, it's gonna, you're gonna, a uh, copy of your marriage certificate to the petitioning parent who's the step parent, uh, proof that the petitioning step parent is a US citizen, and proof that your prior marriages were terminated by divorce or uh, death certificate. So, marriage, divorce, birth certificate of the child, proof that the parent's a US citizen, the step parent. Linda Allison, highly favored James, another Brad Squad VIP member asked, do I still need to complete the I-944 form? No. No. Did a whole thing what, a, what, a, what a great Friday answer that is. No. Okay, Tanya Love, a VIP member, how long after getting my 10-year green card can I start filing for my adult kids back home? Right now. Kenny, Ohio, on YouTube, if my friend's stepkid was approved for an immigrant visa, does it mean his I-140, his I-485 was also approved, even though he has not received an update about it, and it's been over 60 days? No. Those are two different things. An I-130 approves the relationship between the petitioner and the beneficiary. The I-485 approves the adjustment of status. You may have a bona fide relationship between the petitioner and the beneficiary and be inadmissible. Mr. Desmond, Desmond on YouTube, if my K-1 petition is approved and currently at the National Visa Center, can I withdraw it and file an I-130 if I am now married? Yes, you have to. You know I will say, I will say, okay. I will say, I will say on Twitter. Um, if I'm about to turn 21 years old, what can I apply for to extend my current status that will be uh, that will expire once I turn 21? What is your current status? That's I guess he's. A, I guess my guess is that he's a derivative on his parents E L or H or something like that. So if you're in school, the, the most obvious thing would be student visa. Shanika Royal on YouTube, what is the next thing to do if your waiver from I-601 and I-485 got denied? Go to a good lawyer, figure out why it was denied, and do it again better. Okay, Anna Lee Parker on Facebook, if my authorization expired in January 2021 and I applied for the extension in November 2020 and I received the 180-day extension notice, will I receive a new card or do I have to apply again? Say that one more time. If my authorization expired in January 2021 and I applied for the extension in November 2020 and received the 180 days extension notice, will I receive a new card or do I have to apply again? No, the extension for the 180 days is saying to you, while your card is being processed, your old card is extended 180 days. They should mail you a new one. You don't have to do anything. Steve Can on Facebook, if I am in... The F-1 category in my case is currently at the National Visa Center and my priority date was October 11th, 2016. How much longer will I have to wait for approval? Uh, you, should be, you should be getting a green card in less than a year. Okay. okay, Jermaine Brown on Facebook. What does SRC mean on my receipt? It was granted asylum and completed my fingerprints in February. What's next and how long will it take? Uh, SRC, I guess Southern 
Service Center, Southern Regional Center. I'm not sure what you're looking at, but in terms of filing for asylum, if you've had asylum for more than one year and you're now applying for adjustment of status and you already took your fingerprints, hopefully in another six, nine, 12 months at most, you should have a green card. Cardine Simpson on Facebook, if I was removed from the U.S. and given a five-year ban, would I be able to come back to the U.S. if I file a waiver? You need two waivers, one waiver for being uh, found inadmissible and a second waiver for the underlying reason why you were found inadmissible, which is most likely misrepresentation. But maybe, I don't know, you're a mass murderer, and if you're a mass murderer, you can never come back. I don't know why you were stopped at the airport, so it, it matters what the underlying reason was, too. All right. And last one, uh, Sheldon Reed on YouTube. If you have a 10 year green card and have a misdemeanor for five years, only do probation time. Can I travel outside the USA? Uh, what, what was the probation for? Um, misdemeanor for five years. Just say misdemeanor. But I don't know what the misdemeanor was for, so I can't tell you. I need to know a lot more. Thanks for watching. For more Bradshaw Live, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.